movie is about the famous trial of the Chicago Seven, uh, where the leaders of the various student parties and anti-war movement decided to have a demonstration in Chicago in uh, 68. I was familiar with it only from Haskell Wexler's movie. He did a dramatic feature that integrated the actual event called Medium Cool, a quite, quite a famous film because it was the first time it combined documentary footage with a dramatic narrative plot. Beyond the age of innocence, into the age of awareness. It's mostly a courtroom drama. I would say about 60% of the movie take place in the courtroom. We want to underscore again that we're coming to Chicago peacefully, but whether we're given permits or not, we're coming. The way Aaron's writing goes, it's it's very fragmented and vignette. I mean, Aaron's script is non-linear. If we leave here without saying anything about why we came in the first place, it'll be heartbreaking. The trial took place over uh, an extended period of time. I think it started in, in September and then in February. So I wanted to create individual looks for the specific scenes. I think we're a total of 16 different days in the courtroom. So I wanted to distinguish also to understand the passage of time when Abby Hoffman takes the stand and for his final statement, I should say, play that a bit moodier and, and darker. I'm concerned you have to think about it. Give me a moment, would you, friend? I've never been on trial for my thoughts before. I also chose to contrast that with the finale, which was uplifting ending, you know, and, you know, so it's, it's just trying to find a rhythm that dramatically works for the story and the characters. The coverage in the courtroom, of course, is limited to just due to the fact that everybody's sitting in the same seats. And in order to make that visually interesting, again, I applied a similar lensing that I did on Ford versus Ferrari. Look out there. Out there is the perfect lap. You see it? I think so. I went back to the same equipment I had again, of the Alexa LF, the large format, which I really started to discover and work with on Ford vs. Ferrari and again used expanded anamorphics that cover the larger sensor that were customized. What that enables you to do is it, it, you can create intimate close-ups by physically being close and using a wider lens like a 40 or 50 millimeter anamorphic but it also doesn't isolate the character from the surrounding. Because I didn't want to just shoot talking heads, you know, it's a very talky movie and I think that's very important because no one is functioning just as a single unit. I mean, they're, you know, although they don't always agree and they're not always in harmony, but it is a group. So to me, it was very important to tie in. I implied three cameras. I had two LFs and a, a regular mini. It is, you know, more static. There's not a lot of camera movement. And of course, that's in contrast to when we leave the courtroom and there's a lot of kinetic energy and we're trying to reproduce some of the energy from the documentary footage that we were referring to and also using. Uh, in terms of action and level of pr police brutality and tear gas use, we were trying to match, but uh, visually, stylistically, we weren't trying to create vintage footage, but we sprinkle it in with uh, actual footage uh, from the day, and it helps sort of give it some authenticity and, and make it uh, connected and grounded to the actual event, but still allowing us to be a bit more cinematic and, and using the larger format and the different lenses. You should be marching right up to them. I don't think they're gonna surrender, man. Keep it moving. Dave and I are gonna stay and make Tom's bail. Back to the park! I don't carry money. Do you? I do. I'm a grown man. Unfortunately, a very timely subject matter. Uh, although the script was written 10 years ago and this uh, event took place in 68, it's kind of like Aaron said, tragically very uh, relevant and timely today, uh, this year in particular. Yeah.